Hello guys. How are you all? This is Fiction Domain. So we are back with second episode on what if Naruto was in the Avatar The Last Airbender verse. And was the Great White Dragon. But before we start the story, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we will daily provide the best and interesting what if videos. Also like this video. Now let's start the story. Lies, hate and fortune telling four days had passed as the gang traveled, finally coming to a rest stop. The area they chose was that of a large forest in comparison to the small meadows or lakes they took small breathers at in between. Minutes have passed as Naruto once again sighed, the forest was what one could consider relentless, as its plentiful landscape continued on light a desert with no end in sight. Now Naruto was lying on Appa's back, so it wasn't like he was trudging through the leafy landscape, but the boredom had taken root in the blonde. Sokka give it a rest already. Was his tired reply. Okay, but I still reckon it was a good idea to walk, Appa is just too obvious. Making the bison snort. And I agree with you, but you still got us lost, replied Naruto nonchalantly. Hours had passed since they took refuge in the silent forest per Sokka's suggestion. How you people manage to live without a flying bison I'll never know, but what I do know is that walking sucks. Complained on making Naruto grunt, still lying on Appa's back, well since it was Sokka's know-it-all instincts that got us into this mess, why don't you ask him also, Naruto. You have no right to complain due to the fact that you're lying on Appa's back making on laugh and start to make fun of Sokka. I know we're all tired, I am too, but trust me when I say that this way is saw, said Sokka only to stop mid-sentence as they entered a Fire Nation campsite, run. Shouted Sokka, only to find that they were cut from Naruto and Appa by a large fire. Look if you let us leave we'll make sure Naruto leaves you alone. Declared Sokka only to hear Naruto snore from the bison's back, ha seems your friend won't be any hell grunted the firebender as a arrow got lodged in his back, killing him. Look, in the trees. Pointed Katara at a teen standing on a giant branch, wielding a pair of hook sword, soon jumping down and landing on two of the guards, before sending another two flying. Down you go, said the teen as other freedom fighters appeared from every direction, and before they knew it the soldiers were either dead or running away. Wow you took down like half an army back there, said Ong in awe, just as the large fire disappeared showing Naruto yawning. I can't sleep for five minutes can I? Asked the teen, soon to have a pair of hook swords to his neck, so another firebender dare shows his face, isn't it our lucky day boys? Called the leader only to look into two cold blue eyes. Naruto just stared and said, you do realize that the only reason you're alive right now is on right. Everyone noticing the windshield between the two teens, now Naruto come on, he acted without thinking, please don't kill him, please, begged Ong trying to use the puppy dog eyes, fine, sigh okay. He lives, just stop your creeping me out. Naruto responded jumping back on Appa. Um look, you don't really want to fight Naruto, he's kind of the little bald dude's guardian and a really, really powerful firebender. I mean he's taken on 60 plus Fire Nation soldiers and survived, after Sokka's proclamation, the shock was evident amongst the young group of whoever they were. The leader put his blades away, fine, we leave him alone till he gives us a reason not to said the leader only to hear Katara say, just hope you don't give him a reason, he's very protective of us and won't forgive those that harm us. Whatever, oh by the way I'm Jet and these are my freedom fighters, said the brown haired teen with a twig in his mouth. Going from left to right the tall one with the bow and the kid next to him are long shot and sneers, the chick playing with the swords is Smellerby, and finally we have Pipsqueak and the Duke, the two teens watched as Ong walked up to the smaller of the two teens. So Pipsqueak. That sure is a funny name, Ong commented. He started to sweat nervously as the larger of the two looked at him momentarily with an unusual fierce face, and then smile. You think my name's funny? Ong replied with a yes, the giant soon burst out laughing and knocked the airbender to the floor. Naruto watched quietly from Appa's back as the freedom fighter searched the camp. Seeing how Sokka was just starring, the blonde followed his line of sight, only to find Katara and Jet flirting with each other. Naruto just snorted a flame, catching Sokka's attention, whom walked up to Naruto and asked, don't like him either, huh? Which in turn he got a nod from the blonde. Sokka grinned and said look she likes you, so don't worry, but I have a feeling that you're going to end up busting a few skulls. I'm staying with Appa. Let her have her fun while it lasts, but watch out for her. First sign of trouble you come fetch me okay. Naruto replied, soon going back his nap. Hey Jet we found a couple of barrels of blasting jelly. Shouted the duke. Jet nodded and replied, get them on the wagon and take them back to the hideout, catching the airbender's attention. You have a hideout. The question made Jet laugh at the boy's curiosity. Would you like to see it? Only to have Katara in his face answering a quick yes. After walking through the forest for some time Jet raised his hand signaling them to stop, would we stop? Asked Sokka, whose only answer was a rope, and this takes me where? Only to start screaming as he was pulled into the tree above. 
You're on, said the leader handing him a rope, only to watch the boy jump into the trees, is your pet firebender coming with? Asked Jet grabbing the rope only to hear a bored voice from atop of Appa say I'm going to hang with Appa, oh and don't push your luck, who knows what things could catch fire. Making the group reach for their weapons. Is that a threat? Asked Jet, ready to attack, when Katara grabbed him and said, please Naruto is as strong as Iroh the Dragon of the West, trust me I've seen him fight, and you stand little to no chance in winning. Shocking the group that such a powerful bender was near them, and how lucky they were that he wasn't an enemy, for now. Grunting Jet said, fine, but if he steps foot in the hideout, he becomes our enemy. Now hold on tight Katara, grabbing the girl as they lifted off the ground, never noticing the sour look on Naruto's face. Oh you with the swords, called Naruto grabbing Smellerby's attention, you better keep that leader of yours on a leech, because if he betrays their trust, I'll burn this place to the ground. Making the girl back away a little in fear and nod, not trusting her voice. Night had come and gone quickly for Naruto who decided to sleep in the treetops with Appa, glaring at the sun. Naruto yawned, I'm going to look for breakfast for us big guy, see you later. Naruto leapt from the bison into the trees and traveled from branch to branch. Naruto eventually dropped to the ground below, only to meet old man. Sokka had a bad feeling about the group of freedom fighters, but as a warrior he had to complete his mission, plus now he could watch them closely. Sokka what are you doing? Asked Jet as the water tribe member stabbed the tree and replied, it carries vibration, making Jet nod. Wait up, two people coming from the south, said Sokka, only to spot an old man and Naruto carrying a large bag on his back, stop called Sokka, but it was too late. The freedom fighters landed around both Naruto and the old man he was having a nice chat with, so you are a spy after all Naruto. Stated Jet preparing to fight the blonde teen, who slammed two unknown freedom fighters into the tree as they attacked and growled, if I were you Jet, I'd rethink your game plan, only to watch as Jet swung his hook sword at the old man, but was stopped by Sokka, that's enough Jet. Ordered Sokka. The teen grunted and walked away shouting next time firebender. There's always next time, come on Sokka. Sokka looked at Naruto as if asking what to do. Go and do what you feel is best Naruto told him, picking the old man off the floor. Sokka just sat there and waited for the two other members to arrive, what's this about Sokka? I was going to see what Jet was doing. Asked Ong who was going to get a reply from the older teen when Katara said have you seen Jet, I wanted to give him this hat. She said pulling a strange look thing from behind her back. Sokka snorted and said Jet, your boyfriend, is nothing more than a common thug. He said angering the girl. Who says so? Both me and Naruto. He attacked an old man and Naruto while they walked through the forest. He's lucky he's even alive. If I didn't stop him Naruto would have, permanently. And Naruto never acts without a good cause, said Sokka silencing them before Katara replied, I want Jet's side of the story. The group stood in front of the freedom fighter leader, who said wait you told that side of the story, but left out the fact that the man was from the Fire Nation and that your firebending friend was carrying a large unknown item. Making the two look at Sokka. No he left out that information, said Katara harshly only to get Sokka mad and shout, okay, so what if he was Fire Nation he was still a old man and Naruto has always done things by himself and we've never had a reason to doubt him. Making a valid point until Jet pulled a knife out and said, the old man was an assassin sent to kill me. Look it even has a poison kept in the handle. Ong and Katara look at the boy. See and why would Jet lie to us? Plus you were the last person to trust Naruto, so what if we question his actions? Said Katara, shocking both Ong and Sokka, I saw no blade, and yeah I had my suspicions, but Naruto always came through for us. He saved us at Kayashi Island and the Fire Temple, taking on numbers of men I would never want to face alone. Stated Sokka before storming off. Jet jumped to his feet and said please don't leave, look I didn't want to say it around Sokka because he looks up to Naruto, but whatever was in his bag smelled similar to blasting jelly, and there's been word that the Fire Nation is going to burn down the forest. We need you to fill the reservoir to fight the flames. Making the two nod, not sure what to think. Katara entered the tent followed by Ong and said, Sokka we can't leave yet, the Fire Nation plans to burn down this forest, and Jet didn't want it to tell you, but whatever Naruto was carrying. It smelled like blasting jelly. Sokka froze and then angrily replied, WHAT1. Because he told you that, it must be true. I can't believe you Katara. After all we've been through with Naruto you start to question him now. You start to doubt him now. Katara shouted in response. Well why should we trust him? We hardly know anything about him and he never tells us what he's up to. For we could know he could be telling Zuko where we are. Only to clamp her hands over her mouth when the group heard a sad sigh from the doorway. Naruto stood there, his hand was clenched so tight on the doorframe that it started to snap under the pressure. I haven't told you much about myself because you never asked, but to say I'm untrustworthy. 
after all the times I saved your ungrateful ass and that blasting jelly was Appa's breakfast, but what bugs me the most is that you asked for Jet's story, but not mine as well. Well now you don't have to worry about trust me. I think I'll be moving on now, he spoke quietly as he turned to leave. The group ran after Naruto and found no sign of him apart from a single dragon fang necklace, with a crack in it, hanging from a nail on the wall, that's one of Naruto's. Sokka stated sadly. He told me once that he would only give them to people that had a special place in his heart, but by the look of the crack on it, you just lost yours Katara. The girl just grabbed the necklace tightly as tears started to flow from her eyes, no one could comfort her, even Ang was quiet until he said, we've got a big date tomorrow, let's get some sleep, because the sooner we're done here, the sooner we can go look for Naruto. Before re-entering the tent. Naruto just stared at the moon, a small tear crawled down his face, how could she say it, even if she didn't mean it, god I'm being pathetic, I hardly know the girl thought the teen, whipping his eyes. Seeing no point in hanging round, Naruto jumped to his feet before climbing the tree that Appa was sleeping in. Quickly grabbing his gear and some paper, Naruto started to write a small note to the gang, before leaving it attached to Appa's saddle. Taking one last look at the camp, he shouldered the bag and jumped down from the tree, disappearing amongst the leaves. SHH come on. Whispered Jet, waking Sokka who watched as the group left the camp with a blasting jelly, I knew Naruto and I were right. Man why did you have to go and leave now, you stupid blonde, thought the teen before he started to follow them. The group of freedom fighters stood on a cliff overlooking the dam when Jet said, don't blow the dam till it's full, and I give the signal. We can't afford to let anyone from the Fire Nation survive. Sokka was shocked as he heard the statement from behind a bush. But Jet there's Earth Kingdom people down there as well. If we do this won't they get killed as well? Asked the Dutch, only to receive a pat on the shoulder from Jet who replied. We have to make the sacrifice. Make sure to wait for my mark, then blow the dam. Sokka was about to go warn Ong and Katara how bad they messed up when something grabbed his ponytail. Where are you going? Asked Smellerby place a knife against his throat and dragged him off. It was morning when Sokka was dragged in front of Jet. Sokka, how nice to see you again. The teen snored and replied, I know what you're planning. That's why you set us up against Naruto, because you knew that Naruto was suspicious of you and would stop you from destroying the Earth Kingdom village. Because Naruto and I aren't naive as Katara and Ong. We know that you're doing this for yourself and not the people you promised to protect. Naive, no Sokka, but you got one part right. I knew Naruto would reveal our true objective to Ong and Katara, and I needed them to fill the reservoir. I was hoping that you would understand that sacrifices must be made in war Sokka, replied Jet, making Sokka dislike the man even more. Jet there's families down there. Mothers, fathers, and children. All of them will die just because you believe that you have the right to decide it if they live or die. Argued the water tribe's teen, making Jet sigh, I can't afford to lose Ong and Katara. You two take him for a tour of the forest, oh and Sokka you should cheer up. We're going to win a great victory against the Fire Nation. Jet was leading both Katara and Ong down an old riverbed, I'm sorry about my brother Jet. He doesn't trust new people very easily. Katara told him, trying to make conversation with her new crush. Well it's okay now. He already apologized and I guess you said something, but I was wondering how you managed to get a firebender to join you. Ong just looked like someone kicked his puppy when Jet brought up Naruto, I did say something to Sokka, but how Naruto joined us well, have you heard of the white dragon that protects Kayashi Island? Jet nodded and replied sure, we overheard a few firebenders talking about it. Some say said that it was a rare breed of Inagi that breaths fire, while others said it was a rebel firebender, why? Katara was quiet for a second before saying, Naruto was that firebender. He protected me, Sokka and Ong when Fire Nation hunted us down on Kayashi Island, but when Sokka told us about you attacking him, he overheard us fighting and left, leaving only this necklace. Jet had a small grin on his face, thinking this is too easy and was about to reply to Katara when Ong was blasted into the air by a geyser. We're here, underground water is trying to escape, and I need you to help it, said Jet giving Katara a reassuring touch on the shoulder as she voiced her doubts. Naruto stood amongst the large group of injured but alive teens and said, I've had a bad feeling about you lot since day one, and now I know of Jet's plan, I can't leave you lot going around and destroying villages. You bastards think you have the right to attack anyone because you feel like it's your god-given right. I don't think so. So here's the plan, you get to live, but if I hear that this group is still terrorizing villages, then I'm going to come back and end this party permanently. Making those that were still awake nod, too scared to speak. Deciding that they understood and that he had helped enough, Naruto shouldered his bag and left. Ong and Katara watched in horror as the group placed blasting jelly at the base of the now-filled dam. They're going to blow the dam. Said Ong, feeling terrible for not believing Sokka or Naruto. No Jet wouldn't, Katara tried to reason as she watched Ong readying his glider, only to be smashed to the ground by Jet. 
Yes, I would Katara, he said confusing the girl. Why, Jet? You would too if you stopped to think about. Think what they did to your mother. We can't let them do that again to anyone else. Katara just stood there and said, this isn't right, Jet. Looking at the teen in confusion and felt betrayed by Jet, who just sighed and said, I thought you and Sokka would be more reasonable. Making the girl start to cry and quietly ask where is Sokka. Jet just walked up to the girl and placed a comforting hand on her face he said, he's gone with Smellerby and Pipsqueak into the forest, he answered, only to get slammed to the ground by a torrent of water. Bong made a break for his glider and almost made it when Jet grabbed it using his swords and placed it on his back before attacking the avatar. I won't fight you Jet. Shouted the Ong as he jumped onto a tree, making the freedom fight laugh and reply, you're going to have to if you want your glider back, soon chasing Ong, Katara just watched as Jet and Ong ran through the treetops, unable to help. Stay still. Shouted a frustrated Jet as he made another slash as the small boy, who started to backpedal, dodging Jet's attempts to harm him. Deciding that this was going too far the avatar starting sending blasts of wind at the team to slow him down. He sent Jet flying into a tree, dropping his glider. Watching the glider fall, Ong jumped after it, soon followed by Jet. As the two teens started free falling from the trees, Jet noticed Ong was going to make it to the glider first, and thinking fast used a nearby branch to swing off and kick the avatar in the chest. Ong hit the ground with a heavy grunt, looking round he noticed he landed next to his glider and was about to make a break for it when Jet landed behind him, ready to finish him off. Sorry to do this Ong. Said Jet as he went in for the kill, only to be slammed against a tree by Katara using water from a small river. Using waterbender Katara pinned the freedom fighter to the tree by freezing the water. Why Jet, I trusted you. I even lost a friend because I wanted to believe in you, you're sick Jet. Cried the angry girl, only to be silenced when they heard a bird whistle that Jet did in return. What was that? Asked Katara only to hear Jet reply you're too late. Making Ong run towards the edge of the cliff and try to use his glider, only to find a hole in the wing. No, this can't be. Cried Katara. Sokka's still out there, he's our last hope replied Ong, as they watched a flaming arrow descend towards the dam. You shouldn't be so sad today was a great victory, called Jet, only to hear Sokka reply, yes it was, because the village is safe, shocking everyone as he appeared on Appa. Boom ha there goes the dam, what now Sokka? Asked Jet only making Sokka laugh and reply, the village has already been warned. At first they didn't believe at the start until the old man backed me up. Making Jet shout in furry. Sokka you traitor. Shouted Jet. Sokka just stared and said no Jet. You became the traitor when you stopped protecting the innocent Yip Yip. Making Appa fly away, leaving the teen in ice. Just as Appa was out of view Jet heard a small chuckle coming from all around him, who's there, show yourself. Ordered Jet only to look wide-eyed as Naruto stepped from behind a tree. Looks like they're able to handle themselves pretty well, wouldn't you agree Jet? Said Naruto looking at the flooded village from the cliff, Jet just snorted and replied, so what? You come to follow up on your threat. Naruto laugh and look at him saying no, but I've destroyed your little treehouse, don't worry I didn't kill anyone, but sure as hell scared them off. So I'm going to give you the same warning if I hear of you in any other attempt to destroy a village filled with innocent people again, I'll put you six feet under. Before jumping off the cliff, leaving a shocked teen. Aboard Appa. We're sorry Sokka, we should have trusted you, but why go to the village? Asked Katara making Sokka grin and reply instincts Katara, instincts, making on laugh. Sokka started to get annoyed and asked, what's so funny? Only to hear your instincts are taking you the wrong way Sokka. Making the teen chuckle and turn the bison round. They'd been travel for some time now when Katara decided to ask the one thing on everyone's mind, where did Naruto go? Only to have a piece of paper given to her by Sokka just read it he said. Dear gang I've decided that it's time I went to finish my training in firebending, so I won't see you for a while. I'm going to learn of to master my emotions so I can better protect my friends. Maybe we'll see each other again, maybe we won't depends on if I can truly forgive you for what was said, anyway, this is goodbye and good luck with your quest. From Naruto Katara had tears in her eyes as she read the note aloud for Ong who looked just as sad. Sokka sighed, already missing his friend and said let's just get going, like he said we might meet him again in the future, so chin up cheering the group up. Naruto, four days later. Naruto was walking down an old pathway towards a nearby village when a sign post covered in wanted posters caught his attention. So me and Ong are wanted men huh? Asked Naruto, looking at two others, finally, so you do extinct Jiong Jiong the deserter. Not a very catchy name, but Avatar Roku said that you were my only hope. Before walking away, never noticing the figures moving around him. Night had soon fallen, and Naruto was using heat control, a very advanced skill, to stay warm. Man this is lonely, said Naruto who snorted a cloud of smoke from his nose, only to soon have a number of spear-wielding jungle men surround him. 
You shall come with us firebender, Jiang Jiang wishes to see you. Spoke the leader, making Naruto grin. The group had been walking for some time now, and Naruto was getting annoyed with all the silence, until they came to a campsite by the side of a large river, Jiang Jiang is in there waiting for you said the leader, pointing to a hut on a small island. Naruto gave a sharp nod and walked up to the doorway. Taking a deep breath, he entered the small hut only to find a dark-skinned man with scruffy white hair and a long mustache, surrounded by candles. Master Jiang Jiang I have come to seek guidance. Said Naruto kneeling in front of the man. The old firebender stared at the teen in front of him and saw much wisdom, strength, honor and control, but he couldn't control the passion that burnt inside of him. The need to enjoy, even relish the adrenaline during a fight. You are a strong firebender boy, but how can I teach a boy who learned how to walk before he could even crawl? Asked the old man making Naruto stop and think, soon replying, even though I learned the need to walk before I started crawling, I am always willing to amend for my past mistakes. The man gave a sharp nod. So what Avatar Roku said was true. You are a special case, but answer me this one question, what is fire to you? Naruto was silenced again for a while, until a small smile appeared on his face as he thought about Suki and Jun, hell even the Avatar gang and said, fire to me is a representation of my will to protect those that I love and care for. I will to make sure that no matter the situation that they will survive it. Even if I do not but also fire is not only a weapon used to protect and destroy, but a bringer of life for without it, the world would be a cold and dark place. Jiang Jiang nodded, glad that someone was willing to use fire like it should have always been used since the start, personally I believe it to be a curse that will destroy you, anyway your training starts tomorrow boy. Two weeks later. Naruto stood on top of a large mountain wearing his black Hakama pants and boots with a green-headed kung fu shirt, with a Kayashi warrior surrounded by a dragon on the back. Next to him was his master, taking in deep breaths in through his nose and out of his mouth. Naruto, come ordered his new master as he started to walk back down towards the campsite. During the two weeks Naruto had a huge change in his personality with Jiang Jiang, well not so much in his everyday life, as he was still a flirt and fun-loving guy, but he became patient. Realizing that he did act on impulse, but not really caring what the problem was as long as it was sorted, either by talking or a fist. The biggest change was his overall fighting style, he had combined the Kayashi warrior's fighting style that used an opponent's attack against them, with Jiang Jiang's style of taunting your opponent by acting like his opponent was nothing to worry about. Even going as far as start talking to himself about rubbish, knowing that sooner or later they would leave a nice opening for him to strike. Watch the man at the start of episode 14 when he fights the platypus bear, dodging and not really making any effort at all, Naruto and Jiang Jiang sat inside the hut filled with candles, neither saying anything until Naruto my men have told me that the avatar is being brought here by Che. I will send them away, but also you should know that our time together is over, as it is your duty to help the avatar, said Jiang Jiang, knowing the issue his student has with the group. Naruto gave a small smile and replied, On won't give up a chance to learn firebending when it's right there, so be ready to put up a good fight Master Jiang Jiang, and I know it's just I'm not sure if I'm ready yet. Before standing up and bowing. Naruto entered his tent and grabbed his fans, placing them on his left hip, and pulled his green hood over his head, if they're coming here I better get ready to leave, said Naruto out loud as he left his tent to go and do breathing exercises, but not before remembering his new katana. Flashback. Naruto was going through a basic katana stance that he learned from the Kayashi, but whenever he tried to use the blade, something felt off, as if the sword was too timid. The blade is too light for you, said Jiang Jiang, watching his apprentice from the sidelines, light. But it's the blade I was given by Suki and it's a masterpiece, one of the best they owned. Replied the teen, looking at the standard blade in his hands. Jiang Jiang just sighed and said, I've been watching you use that blade, and I know that the sword means a lot to you, but it is built for someone who doesn't use so much strength at their attacks, making the boy understand. Naruto sheathed the blade and sighed, what do you suggest Master Jiang Jiang? He asked, only to be given a signal to follow. Naruto stood outside his master's hunt being told to wait by the man that came out holding a bundle of cloth, this was a gift from an old friend of mine back in the Fire Nation, when we both fought in the war. Jiang Jiang handed it to Naruto. Naruto looked at the bundle, not sure what to say, he knelt on the floor and put it down, so he could open it carefully. The katana was beautiful, the sheath was a dark green with a white and green camo print halfway down it. The weapon had no hand guard and had the same green and white camo pattern on the handle, the blade itself was dark silver with a green tint to it. The sword is made from a very strong and very rare metal called dragon steel, it was found in a cave rumored to house dragons in the mountains of the Fire Nation. How it was made I do not know, but I know that sword is the only one of its kind. Stated Jiang Jiang. End of flashback. Walking out of the tent, Naruto placed the katana on his back and tied it there with a white piece of cloth. 
place his hands in his trouser pockets, he looked around the camp and spotted three familiar faces being led into the camp by the local warriors. Seeing no point in hang round, he fished a single white lotus tile from his pocket and started throwing it into the air, thinking, why did master make me promise to keep you safe? Before placing it back in his pocket and leaving the campsite. The group never noticed the tall blonde leave the campsite as the warrior leader pushed Che forward, saying Jiung Jiung wants to see you Che, go now only to make the man nervous, oh that's okay, we can catch up later, replied Che, as Ong tried to pass the guard, saying Jiung Jiung is down there. That's great because I need to see him only to have the sharp end of a spear in his face, no, Che go, you stay replied the leader before leading them into a nearby tent. Later that night Che stumbled into the tent that the group was using and sat down, waking Ong and Momo, so what did he say, can I see him now? Asked an excited Ong only to receive a depressing sigh from Che, who replied Master Jiong Jiong is mad that I brought you here. He says you are to leave right away, waking Sokka up, finally we can go. Said the teen as he started to get up. Why won't he see me? Asked Ong. Che responded he says you are not ready since you haven't mastered water or earth bending. How can he tell? Questioned Ong. He saw you walking into camp, he can tell said Che, only to watch as the avatar left to speak with Jiung Jiung. Naruto was returning to camp and saw Ong make his way towards his master tent and chuckled good luck master because he won't give up without a fight before entering his own tent. Morning had come and Naruto was peacefully sleeping until wider, wider boy woke him up, grunting he got dressed and left to watch Ong train. Too impatient thought Naruto as he watched Ong start making a fireball, damn it said Naruto as the ball exploded, burning Katara, who ran away leaving Sokka fighting with Ong. Ow cried the girl looking in the reflection of the water, only to gasp as she sees Naruto standing behind her, shh, just put your hands in the water ordered the teen, not really sure if he should have helped her, stupid Naruto. I should have just left, but knew I just can't stand to see a woman cry, thought the teen that watched Katara use the water to heal her burns. Naruto what are you doing? Asked Jiong Jiong as he came to check up on the burned girl, only to watch her heal her hands with water. Naruto snorted and said don't know but I'm leaving now. Much to Katara's horror, who just grabbed him and cried. No, please don't. We miss you Naruto. I'm so sorry for what I said. Please come back with us, making Naruto sigh and wrap her in a hug. Jiong Jiong was about to start talking when a fire flew towards them, Naruto take your friend and run, don't come back or you will be destroyed, ordered the fire bending master, who turned and created a large wall of fire, blocking the three boats that were making their way upriver. Naruto soon stopped running which worried Katara. Do as master Jiong Jiong ordered, but I have to go back. Katara ran as fast as she could toward Sokka Katara are you alright, you look like you saw a ghost or something. Asked a teen, that was completely ignored. On where is he? Asked a girl that started running to Jiong Jiong's hut when her brother pointed at it. Naruto unsheathed his katana as he ran towards his master's location. You better live old man, said Naruto out loud as he came to the river bank where his master was surrounded. Damn it, think Naruto what you need is a distraction. On ran towards the group of firebenders shouting Jiong Jiong, giving Naruto enough time to make his way towards the tree line that his master was walking backwards towards. Men grab the deserter, the avatar is mine. Ordered Admiral Zhao, Naruto watched as the firebenders started attacking his master, only to find that he made a column of fire to escape. Let's see what my old master taught you avatar. Shouted Zhao sending blasts of fireballs at the shock team that just started dodging the attacks, duck and evade, so the old man taught you how to be a coward, but I doubt he showed what a true firebender is truly able to do. Shouted Zhao, who sent a large fireball at Ong, only to watch as a white fireball came over his shoulder and crash into it before it even got halfway. Naruto walked from the tree line and stood next to Ong saying, Ong there are still more men looking for Sokka and Katara. I'll go deal with them so go, but remember your lesson with Master Jiong Jiong. Making the young airbender nod dumbly, still shocked to his friend here and watched as the blonde firebender ran into the trees. Naruto ran as fast as he could towards the campsite and found Appa, Sokka and Katara, surrounded by Fire Nation warriors. Damn it to hell. Sending a small blast of fire at the group, catching the soldiers off guard. Sokka was confused at what was going on until he spotted Naruto charge out of the tree line, Katana posed to strike Katara at Naruto. What the hell is going on? Asked a confused teen. Naruto charged at the disorientated group of firebenders and used one as a springboard, landing in front of Katara and Sokka, get going you two. He ordered. The two just stood there, shocked at how mature Naruto was acting, due to the fact that he used to enjoy fighting. What? No, Naruto come with us. Replied Katara, only to have Naruto shake his head. No, now move. He ordered the blonde again, only this time he threw Katara up onto Appa's back. Sokka unless you want me to do that to you, get moving. Said the blonde, taking his katana in a reverse grip and making a small ball of fire in the other. 
the water tribe boy just gave a sad nod and climbed on Appa's head, and with a quick yip yip, they were off just in time as a large number of fireballs were sent at Naruto. Stand and fight Avatar. A man did Admiral Zhao as he sent fire blast at the young Avatar, burning the forest around them. Ong just jumped out the way as another fireball flew over his head and said no self-control, and looked at the boat stocked on the river. Oh we were fighting. Asked Ong sarcastically, making Zhao loss his temper and start firing fireballs wildly. Ong jumped towards the boat, landing on the roof he said, look at me, I'm Admiral Zhao while taunting the man, who retaliated by throwing a wave of fire at him. You know, when you said you were an admiral I at least thought you would be better than Zuko. Called Ong, barely dodging the fire that went over his head. Ong jumped to the next boat still calling insults at Zhao, happy that his plan was coming together. Naruto had just finished off the last firebender when he realized that everyone had left the area. At least they're safe, plus I still haven't heard word from Junior Suki thought the teen as he ran into the woods. Zhao looked around as the avatar pointed out that he destroyed all his ships during the fight and screamed as he watched them fly away on the flying bison. Hey wait a minute, where is Jiang Jiang and Naruto? Asked a worried Ong as the group flew over the abandoned campsite, only to hear Katara reply sadly they're all gone, even Naruto disappeared after he saved us from the Fire Nation. Why was Naruto even here, I mean, what more can a Firemaster learn? Asked Sokka, making the group silent until Long said Jiong Jiong said he had two students, one was filled with rage and wanted to use fire to destroy, and the other had too much passion when fighting to protect, both lacked discipline. Those two students were Zhao and Naruto, only Naruto was willing to take the time in learning the basics, now truly understanding what Jiong Jiong was trying to tell him. Naruto had been traveling for a week now with little time to rest as the Fire Nation was on his tail, by the looks of things I have no choice but to make my way to the Northern Water Tribe, the teen thought as he came towards a nearby port town. Naruto walked through the town, his hood hiding his identity, as he spotted a group of familiar female faces. Sneaking up behind the group he grabs the woman in front of him and said now why am I not surprised to see you here. The New Partnership and Battle of the Northern Water Tribe Part 1. Naruto sat in front of the campfire of a large campsite, surrounded by armored women and sporting a large handprint and a black eye, ladies be reasonable, how was I supposed to know that Suki wasn't the one I grabbed, I mean come on, you all had your backs to me sobbed Naruto comically. Not realizing he was making things worse. The group of Kayashi warriors almost gave into to forgiving Naruto, right up until he said they all look the same from behind. So you're saying that you can't tell which one out of us is your own girlfriend because our asses all look the same roared Suki, kicking the boy as he smiled and nodded. Now wearing two black eyes, Naruto cried what the hell was that for? Making the girls laugh as he now resembled a panda bear. Getting annoyed Naruto pulled his hood up, shadowing his face, aw, is Naruto getting angry? Asked Suki, her voice taking on a childish tone as she hugged her boyfriend from behind and whispered so, how much did you miss me? Sending shivers up the boy's spine. Growling he pulled the girl over him and pinned her arms to the ground, head in his lap and looked up into his eyes that showed a foreign emotion to him. His eyes showed pain, pain that could only come from being betrayed. What happened out there Naruto? Asked Suki softly, waving to her warriors to leave them and go to their tents. It's stupid, but I overheard Katara fighting with Sokka and she said that she trusted someone else over me, that I was untrustworthy due to the fact that I do my own things when we make stops at different towns, I know she wasn't thinking straight when she said it, but it hurt replied Naruto who was pulled into a loving hug by Suki. It's okay Naruto, but you do realize that you still have to help the avatar, because if he ends up dead due to the fact you were sulking, I'll kill you said Suki, giving him a soft kiss and pulling him into a hug, both drifting off into a comfortable sleep next to the open fire. Naruto grunted as the sun shone into his eyes, refusing to let the boy sleep a moment more. You may be the source of my power, but I still hate you groaned Naruto, waking the body that lay on his chest. Naruto, shut up will you, I'm trying to sleep here complained Suki, burying her face deeper into Naruto's chest, forgetting that the pair was sleeping outside. Naruto complied with Suki's demand until he heard a group of giggling girls, their heads sticking out of their tents. Sighing Naruto pretended not to notice them and lift Suki off the ground, saying I'm going to take a wash in a waterfall I passed, won't be long before taking his jacket off and placing it over her, showing his well-defined upper body, only to hear gasps of shock from the girls surrounding him. Look at those muscles whispered one of the girls, gaining nods of agreement from the rest. You know girls if you're going to spy on people, you shouldn't make so much noise laughed Naruto, leaving a campsite full of blushing girls. Naruto didn't take long in the waterfall due to the fact that he still had to find transport to the northern water tribe by the end of the day. Entering the campsite he spotted the Kayashi warriors looking at his katana and the image on the back off his jacket, the sword was a gift from Master Jiong Jiong, it's made of dragon steel, making the girls go wide-eyed at the rare sword in their hands. 
and the jacket is a representation of who I am and what I stand for, the white dragon is a symbol of purity and wisdom, and the Kayashi warrior is a symbol for strength and honor. Suki smiled at her boyfriend and handed him three dragon fangs, making him chuckle and say now these were a gift from Fang, Avatar Roku's dragon, there to show who holds a special place in my heart, while handing one back to the shocked girl. The group watched the two teens, with a mixture of awe, pride and a little jealousy, Naruto are you sure? Asked Suki, overwhelmed by the gift, only to receive a nod, confirming it. Suki just gripped the necklace tightly, afraid that it would disappear. Look I have to get going soon, you know I want to spend time here with you, but I need to get to the Northern Water Tribe ASAP. Replied Naruto, trying to get Suki to understand, who just said I know you do but can you just stay for a little longer, me and the girls have found something on our trip and trust me, you're going to like it making the blonde team pout, though he was excited about gaining a gift from the girls. Naruto sat patiently for a good couple of hours, waiting for the girls to get back from the nearby town. He eventually bored and seeing as he had nothing better to do, he started to go over the basics of Tessenjutsu, using fans, not noticing the group had already returned. He's very skilled in our ways, even adding new fighting styles to better suit him, said one of the older members. Um, Naruto called Suki, catching the teen's attention, who spotted a giant white manticore with black strips, take a look at Wow Mount. Wyvern Windrider, its mane was ice blue, along with a pair of large white bat wings and scorpion tail, standing behind the group. What the hell how Dao here did, okay why is there a giant, not to mention, borderline extinct creature behind you? Questioned a stunned Naruto, making the girls giggle. We found him being attacked by a bounty hunter, and well when we saved him, he kept following us and has been with us for over two weeks now replied Suki, leading the manticore towards her boyfriend. Naruto stared at the beast that just used strength and cunning, a saddle and reins already attached to him, so what, you want me to look after him? Asked Naruto, not sure of the whole thing. Noticing that Naruto wasn't too sure about having the beast with him, the girls lined up and put on their best puppy dog eyes they could muster. Pretty please Naruto, he can't stay with us, and well, we all know it would make your life easier with all the traveling said Suki, pressing her impressive chest against Naruto's arm. Realizing that he lost this fight no matter what, he walked up to the beast and said well, um I'm Naruto, and I guess we're partners earning bored stare from the beast, we're not going to get along are we? Earning what looked like a grin from his new partner. The Kayashi warriors watched the scene, laughing silently as the new duo stared at each other, Naruto, um can you follow me? Asked Suki, walking into her tent, seeing as it would free him of his new headache, Naruto followed his girlfriend into her tent. As soon as he entered, blood started leaking from his nose at the sight of a half-naked Suki, showing an impressive pair of D-cup breasts, you going to stand there all day are you going to join me? Asked Suki, who soon entered a world of bliss as Naruto started to kiss her neck while taking her right breast in his hand. A good hour later and the group of women sighed in relief as the sounds of Suki moaning ended and a sweating Naruto came out of the tent with only his pants on and a huge grin, saying you might want to wait a while. She kind of passed out making the girls blush and wonder how good the blonde stud was. Needing a good wash, he made his way back to the nearby river. Quickly finishing up, he made his way back to camp to get dressed but was confronted by his new friend. So what should we call you? Asked a teen, staring into the golden eyes of the manticore, we called him Hei, Swift, I hope you don't mind. Spoke a limping Suki, covering her sweaty body with a blanket. Shaking his head he replied, I hope you're as fast as your name boy while stroking it behind its ear, making the lazy manticore purr. Naruto turned to his new lover, saying look, Suki, I've got to get going, I know we haven't had much time together, but this war will be over soon, then we will have all the time we want pulling the girl into a tight hug, angry that he could only spend a few hours with her. Realizing his time was short, he gave her a soft kiss and jumped on the manticore and was about to leave when a Kayashi warrior handed him a pair of orange-tinted snow goggles. To help see during a snowstorm she said before rejoining the group. Not wanting to drag it out any longer, Naruto placed the goggles around his neck and pulled the reins, signaling for Hei to take off towards the frozen city, only to look down and realize the beast wasn't moving. Look boy, how about we make a deal, you fly and I get you a tiger seal or something whispered Naruto, hey I quickly jumped to his feet and took off, leaving the group of giggle women behind. When Naruto was well out of hearing distance one of the Kayashi women asked so I'm guessing he's hung like a saber-toothed moose lion by the noises you two were making, causing their leader to turn bright red and run into her tent. Naruto and Hei had been traveling for a few hours, with little to nothing visible, the pair decided to take rest in a nearby abbey, so glad I listened to Avatar Roku during his lessons in geography, thought the teen as the beast started to descend from the clouds. As the abbey came into view Naruto saw a giant white beast take off, sighing the teen said aloud, that boy, wherever he goes, trouble follows. Deciding to do some damage control, Naruto had Hei land outside the abbey and walk in. 
Zuko, Iroh and June lay on the floor as the Shershu ran wild, destroying everything until a large roar scared the beast. What the hell is going on here people? Demanded Naruto, shocking everyone at his presence, riding a manticore. Iroh just chuckled as Naruto and Hei made their way over to them, old man if you want to live another day, you'd better let my woman go making Iroh give a nervous chuckle. Why are you here? Ordered Zuko, earning himself a bored look from both the teen and the beast, not even answering Naruto dismounted the beast and picked June up, saying you better have a good reason June before walking over to the Nyla and grabbing her by the snout. And you had better calm down shocking everyone at how docile the creature became. The two banished firebenders watched as Naruto walked out with June over his shoulder and the two beasts reins in his hands, leading them away from the abbey, but not before shouting those two will cover the damage. Making a small campfire near a river, Naruto lead the shirshu to the water and washed its nose, clearing the different scents. So, you want to tell me why you're hunting the same person I'm supposed to protect? Asked Naruto, his voice showing that he wasn't joking with her. I was hunting him because the stubborn prince demanded I find a bald monk, due to the fact I ripped a giant hole in his ship, he never mentioned the avatar, just that the girl would lead us to the monk replied June, not intimidated by the blonde, who sighed. Looking round he noticed that Hei and Nyla had fallen asleep, and seeing no point in making a move the teen sat next to June. Look I'm sorry, I just thought that you were doing it while knowing all the facts Naruto whispered into June's ear, so how about we just spend the night together. But in the morning I got to get to the North Pole, making the bounty hunter sad that they wouldn't be able to spend much time together again. Pine she mumbled, sitting in the blonde's lap and burrowing her face in the crook of his neck, only to find a burst there, Naruto why is there a love bite on your neck? She asked in an accusing tone, Naruto just blushed at the memories and replied well I kind of met up with Suki yesterday, and well, we kind of made it official. June had enough decency to blush at the thought of Naruto and Suki, but that soon turned into a sinister grin as she whispered, so Suki had to go, but I can't. Making Naruto shiver and silently cry. I'd love to, I really really would, but with those two there and no tent, sorry babe, but not tonight making the woman pout. Deciding to play with Naruto's head, June slowly pushed herself against his crotch and rubbed against the newly awoken muscle, making the blonde firebender let out a loud groan in pleasure, evil, truly evil muttered Naruto, as he started to kiss her neck, forcing a whimper out of her. At the same time slowly stroking her lower back. Bastard she moaned out as the blonde started to play with her well-developed ED breast and softly bite her collarbone, before lifting her up and walking into the forest, away from praying eyes. The night had flown by for the lovers as the sun rose, the bright light shining into their eyes, waking the duo. A little longer Naruto mumbled the sore but very satisfied bounty hunter, lying on the blonde's chest. Said blonde had started to wake and replied, we need to wash up because the earlier we're up, the more time we can spend together before I have to go. Seeing no fault in Naruto's plan the girl said, carry me making the teen roll his eyes and stand up, picking her up bridal style and walk towards the river. Cold shrieked the woman as the water touched her skin, making Naruto laugh and slowly start to give off heat warming the water. As soon as the pair had finished, they started the search for their clothes, finding them all over. In places such as high branches in the trees or a bush, Hell Naruto found his pants outside a platypus bear cave, yeah, it was a wild night. So what now? Asked a depressed June, knowing that Naruto would have to leave soon, well I guess I can stay another hour replied the teen, while checking the position of the sun. Of course the hour flew by and Naruto was soon on his way, promising June to meet her as soon as he could. Boredom was all the pair felt as they flew over nothing but sea and ice for the past day and half, you know hey I, I hate the snow gaining a roar of agreement from the beast. Watching the sunset the pair decided to take a break on a small iceberg to regain some energy, soon the new partners fell asleep, not realizing that they were surrounded by small boats filled with water benders. Silently the group of benders made their way towards the group, shocked to see such a beast before them, aren't manticores usually too dangerous to become mounts, I heard the fire nations got a bounty out for them, whispered a water bender, not realizing he woke Naruto. If you're going to sneak up on someone, you should really stay quite called the blonde, startling the group. What are you doing in our waters boy questioned one of the men, getting in a stance with the others soon following. Realizing that he was outnumbered and the fact that he was in their playing ground, he raised his hands and said I'm a friend of the avatars and I was planning on meeting him here when he comes to train. We shall see if you tell the truth, but we must take precautions said the same man, binding Naruto and Hei in ice. It didn't take long for Naruto to be escorted to the northern water tribe, the huge ice wall looming in front of them, so the avatar here yet. Asked Naruto only to get silence from the group. As they made their way through the canals of the city, Naruto noticed a growing group of people watching them. Naruto sat in front of the water tribe leader, to his right was a beautiful white-haired girl with a dark skin, and on his left was an old man, with a look of utter boredom on his face. 
I am Arnuk, chieftain of the Northern Water Tribe, to my right is my daughter, Princess Yu, and to my right is Master Paku. Now you are brought before us saying that you are friends with the Avatar, but answer me this what is a wanted firebender doing with the Avatar? Naruto stared at Arnuk and replied, My name is Naruto Uzumaki, student of Avatar Roku and Jiong Jiong the deserter, I am also Ong's, well I was his bodyguard until recent events shocking the three in front of him. Now, I have answered your questions, so can you answer mine? Where is Hei, my manticore and if possible may I study your waterbending forms? Why would you need to learn the waterbending stances when you're a firebender boy? Asked Paku, interested in the lad. Naruto was silent until he said I have mastered the Kayashi warrior way of battle, as well as firebending, but I still have much to learn, one is how to use my lightning to its greatest potential, his voice was filled with determination. I see, power through balance, not many seek it, as it takes years to fully master, but I am willing to give you some basic water stance scrolls, but in exchange of you must watch over Princess Yu, deal? Said Master Paku, earning a nod from the teen. Arnuk watched the teen and said your mantiker is being kept at the stables, but where did you find such a rare beast, and even going as far as taming it? Naruto started laughing, confusing the group. Realizing he hadn't answered the question, Naruto said my girlfriend, the leader of the Kayashi warriors, and her squad found him being attacked by some bounty hunters and saved him, he's been following them ever since. But seeing as they couldn't keep him, they asked me to take him with me, so he's still as wild as any other manticore making the chieftain nod. Two days later. Naruto sat next to Hei on top of a roof, looking out to sea and said, you can come out now only to reveal Princess Yu hiding in a doorway. Blushing she asked I wanted to see your mount, if that is alright making Naruto chuckle and give a small nod. Standing up, he pushed Hei on his back and started rubbing his belly, come on, he only bites if I tell him to easing the girl's fear, and soon joined the blonde teen in rubbing the beast's belly. Be beautiful, I've heard that they come from the top of the frozen mountains in the Earth Kingdom, but the pictures and books show it to be a powerful beast that hunts children, said Yu, making Naruto burst into tears, Hei won't even hunt a tiger seal he's that lazy, and that's not the problem. The problem is all he does is eat by the looks of things. Even though we've only been together for no more than a week, it feels like we've been together all our lives. The said beast just purred an agreement, making the princess giggle, but soon stopped when a man called Princess Yu, your father wishes to see you making the girl sigh and reply, I'll be right there, thank you Naruto and goodbye, to both of you leaving them to watch the growing crowds form. Looking over the edge Naruto spotted a giant white ball of fur being led through the city, so you've arrived said the teen, as he jumped on Hei and flew towards the temple. Ang, um, Katara and Sokka sat on the head table of the feast, next to Chief Arnuk who stood and said tonight we celebrate the arrival of our sister tribe, but also some we all believe to be gone from the world, the avatar making the crowd calling in joy also I would like to say that my daughter, Princess Yu, is now of marrying age. The gang looked at the white-haired princess, followed by two guards and a large white and black striped manticore, a familiar figure sitting on its back. Naruto called Ang, um, happy that his friend was here only to be shocked when Naruto placed a finger on his lip and pointed to the three men in front of them, now Master Paku and his students shall perform for us. Dismounting, Naruto walked up to the group, sitting next to Katara and Ong, Naruto when did you get here? Asked Ong, his eyes glued to the beast lying behind Naruto. I got here about a day before you lot replied the teen, throwing a large leg of meat to his partner, Naruto, is that really a manticore? Asked a nervous Ong, remembering all the rumors he had heard as a child. Naruto just nodded and turned to Katara, saying look, um, well I guess I should say I'm sorry for leaving you with these two, but I needed to sort myself out, and I now realize that you just wanted to believe Jed and me saying that he was false must have hurt you making the girl go quiet. Grabbing her fang from her pocket, how it had a huge crack, but now it's only slightly cracked. She asked, confused to what had happened to the fang. The crack wasn't caused just by you, it symbolized how damaged our relationship friendship is and still is slightly, it probably would have repaired itself sooner if I just let go of the hate I felt when you said those things, but it looks like we still have so problems answered the teen. Taking the necklace from her and placing it around her neck. Katara was about to replay when the two teens heard Sokka say well I'm kind of like a prince myself making them laugh. You a prince, prince of what? Questioned Katara, making Sokka growl and reply a lot of thing if you must know, now what was I saying only to get more embarrassed when Naruto said hey Katara, you did say he had those watch towers and the army of small people. Sokka just turned away so um princess you, I was um wondering if you'd like to do an activity. Making the two teens laugh at him, hell even hey I was laughing at him. An activity, um I'm not sure, I'll have to ask my bodyguard later replied the princess. Very smooth Sokka, you're on your way to being a great Casanova called Naruto. The group watched as Ong and Chief Arnuk left the table, seeing as Sokka was still trying his luck with the princess, Naruto said, look Katara, I was wondering if you'd like to walk Hei back to his stable. 
only getting a nervous nod from the girl. As the teens walked outside the temple, Naruto stopped making the girl turn and was about to question him when Naruto said like hell am I walking now I can fly before jumping on Hei back, putting his hand out for her to grab. Come on, it's a lot more fun than flying Appa, even though I love the flying furball. Slightly hesitant, Katara grabbed his hand and was pulled up, so she was sitting in front of him, his arms around her waist, and whispered hold on before giving the reins a sharp pull, signaling for Hei to take off. Next morning. Naruto sat on the top of the temple stair, watching as Katara and Paku argued. What do you mean no, I didn't risk my life traveling halfway around the world for a no, shouted Katara, glaring at Paku, who just sat there and replied women in this village use their water bending to heal. So why don't you go to the healing hut with Yugoda? Getting bored, the blonde teen walked down the temple stairs, not paying attention to the screams as made his way towards the stable. AI was bored, as there was little a Manticore could do in the giant ice capital, well apart from laying next to Appa, as it went through the adventures it had with Ong, when someone said hey boy, you miss me. In a sarcastic tone, making the beast snort and turned its head away. Hoping the pest was gone, hey I looked around only to find an irritated Naruto. You're so lucky that it was Suki that asked me to take you with me, growled Naruto as he snorted out a flame, scaring the creature. Getting worried, Naruto walked slowly towards hey and said in a calm voice hey you okay buddy? Placing his hand in front of him, showing he meant no harm. Katara was making her way towards the healing huts when she spotted Naruto trying to comfort his manticore, noticing he was making no progress she called, want to hand Naruto. Catching the teen's attention. Not wanting to startle Hei, Naruto gave a slow nod to Katara's question, only to watch in shock as the girl just walked up to the beast and stroked its ear. What, how? Asked a stump Naruto, making the girl giggle at the faces he made and replied hey I by the looks of things is scared of something you did, and also he seems to see men as untrustworthy, making Naruto grunt, smoke coming out of his nose, scaring hey I. Naruto it's your flames called Katara, realizing the problem right away. Naruto's shoulders dropped at the news and whined great, how can I look after you if you're scared of flames? Making the beast look ashamed. Sitting in front of the winged creature and looking it in the eyes he said, we'll get through this buddy, but for now I'm wondering how you handle lightning quickly covering his hand in electricity. Katara watched quietly as the two new partners bonded, mildly shocked when Naruto covered his hand in electricity. She was about to voice her concern, but noticed that hey I looked more fascinated with the lightning than scared, looks like it's lightning till you get over your fear boy said Naruto, ending the flow of lightning, and struck the manticore behind both ears. So what can I do for you? Asked Naruto, standing up and watching Hei enter the stable, I was just making my way to the healing huts when I noticed you, and Hei replied the girl making Naruto chuckle and say, so Paku still said no, well I'm sure you work something out before smacking her ass and walking away. Naruto had spent the entire night practicing with his lightning bending, so it was more effective seeing as he couldn't use his fire bending, well not until Hei got over his problem, that is. Taking a look at the water bending scroll carefully, he started to see where his lightning bending would be benefited by some of the moves, this will be more of a challenge than I thought said Naruto aloud. Taking another look at the scroll, he started to make circular motions with his arms, generating and holding lightning in his hands. Almost, almost said Naruto, waiting for the ball that formed in his hands to hit its peck before slamming his fist forward, send it towards the training dummy, making it explode. Ah, highly concentrated lightning equals explosion laughed the teen as a group of waterbenders watched as the boy used their style to create a new attack. A powerful man he would become said Arnuk, gaining nods from the crowd that continued to watch the blonde train well into the night. Naruto stood next to Ong and Sokka, not sure to what was going on, as Katara said please, Ong needs this training, making the chief sigh and reply, what can I do, maybe if you swallowed your pride and apologies, I'm sure Master Paku will take Ong back. Grinding her teeth she nodded and was about to when Paku said come on little girl, I don't have all day forcing Katara to lose her temper. No she shouted while slamming her foot on the ground, making cracks appear on the floor, and nearby pots explode, like hell will I say sorry to a miserable old timer like you she declared. Pointing her finger at the man as continued to say if you're man enough I'll be outside shocking everyone in the bar except Sokka and Naruto. Trying to play peacekeeper Ong said, I'm sure she didn't mean that only to make the two older teens burst out laughing, you sure, she sounded dead serious to me. Replied Naruto, Sokka nodding in agreement. Katara you don't have to do this called Ong, as the three male teens chazzed after, yay Katara, Ong can find a new master continued Sokka. Naruto just sat on a step, watching as Paku walk right past Katara, earning himself a water whip to the back of the neck. Quickly getting annoyed with the girl, Paku turned and looked at her, saying, you want to learn to fight, watch closely. Summoning a large wave from the two pools of water nearby, Paku sent it towards Katara, sending her flying. 
Naruto watched as the two waterbenders sent waves of water and ice at each other. There must be more to waterbending, said Naruto to himself, getting bored of the constant taunting Paku did. Only to watch as the watermaster sent a barrage of ice spikes down on Katara, pinning her in place. This fight is over stated the old man as he walked away, not paying attention to the girl shouting at him that she wasn't finished. Naruto just stood up and getting a wired feeling, looked at the out to the sea, something big is about to go down thought the teen, catching the last of Katara and Paku's conversation. Gran Gran left because she wouldn't let your stupid customs rule her life spoke Katara it must have took a lot of courage waiting for Paku to say something till Princess Yu ran off crying. Naruto couldn't shake the feeling he got, it was as if a storm was brewing and he was helpless, and he hated that feeling more than anything. Deciding to see Hei, Naruto was jumping roof to roof when he noticed Appa take off with two people on his back, is that Princess Yu with Sokka, damn boy likes a challenge, if I remember rightfully she's due to be married thought the teen. Shaking his head and continuing to make his way towards Hei. Nearing the stable he saw no sign of the flying beast, thinking bet the damn thing is still sleeping, was worth it, though remembering a naked Suki. Shaking his head and calling Hei, fancy going on a little hunt making the beast jump through the window. Grinning at its excitement, Naruto jumped on his back and placed his goggles over his eyes. When you're ready boy spoke Naruto as the beast shot off into a run. Going through a city filled with canals wasn't a good idea as Hei almost fell into the river for the seventh time. Just as Naruto was about to start complaining, a thick blanket of black snow fell from the sky, this is no snow, damn it, why do I always predict the bad events thought the teen. Pulling the reins, he signaled for Hei to make his way to the temple. People the day we have feared for so long has come to pass stated Chief Arnuk, now as the Fire Nation makes its way towards us, I ask, with a heavy heart, my people to come here, fight for your nation, knowing that some of you will not return, but even if they lose their lives. They shall always be remembered looking round he gave a high sigh before finishing off I have an important mission, but I need volunteers, who amongst you will help. I will call Sokka, shocking Katara and Ong, I guess me too sigh someone's got to watch you back, plus hey I still too nervous round fire to be of any help at the moment stated Naruto, giving Katara a soft reassuring smile. Arnuk nodded and called out, please step forward so you may receive my mark. Watching the group walk towards the chieftain, not sure of the situation. You sure about this Sokka? Asked Naruto as the pair walked away, both having three red lines on their foreheads, yay was all the water tribe teen replied, looking back at Princess Yu. Noticing what was going on, Naruto placed a reassuring hand on his friend's shoulder and said don't worry, things will work out. Sokka just replied with a small smile as the duo made their way out the building and down to the main wall. Naruto, Ong, Katara and Sokka stood next to Appa on the main wall, watching a ship charge towards them, a huge fireball being sent towards them. Thinking fast, Naruto charged some lightning in his hands and sent it colliding with the flaming projectile, causing a huge explosion. Wu Vong ordered Naruto blasting the incoming attacks as Appa and Ong charged towards the lone ship. Get to your positions shouted Naruto towards Sokka and Katara as another barrage of fireballs crashed into the city, what about you? Called the girl, watching as Naruto ran towards the stables, not answering her. Sokka just closed his eyes in thought, soon pulling his sister away, knowing that whatever the teen had planned it was going to be big. Running past the cries of the scared, something's not right, said the teen aloud as he made his way to the top of the cliff surrounding the city. Finally making it to the top Naruto looked in horror as he saw hundreds of Fire Nation ships coming over the horizon. Holy shit whispered the teen, the sun setting in the distance. The bee continued. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.